I should describe myself. I'm a sensitive voodoo man. What am I looking for? Well, if I knew that, I wouldn't need to put out a personal ad. Why did I let my brother talk me into moving here? This town needs saving, he said. Restless spirits, he said. Oh, well, I can't blame them. With all the damn tourists here, I feel pretty restless myself. This town's got all the charm of a burning outhouse. Ugh, just my luck. I better poke around for something to help me put this fire out. There's got to be something in my office I can use to douse this overblown candle. I like having books in my office for some light reading. Homer, Aeschylus, Euripides, Aristophanes, Herodotus. Just kidding, they're mostly spy novels. It's a mask representing Papa Legba, a voodoo demigod. He's one of the most powerful Loa and arbiter between humanity and the spirit realm. It's a mask representing Baron Samdi, a voodoo demigod. He's the lord of the underworld and one of the most powerful Loa. I like to keep him close. I find it comforting somehow. There's a hidden switch behind the mask. My seltzer bottle. That fire is about to have a toe tag and a ticket to the big adios. That's better. Voodoo Detective speaking, how may I help you? Yes, that's my real name. No, I don't detect voodoo. I practice voodoo and use hoodoo to detect. It's right on the sign. No problem, take care. If you're from the Fire Brigade, you're a little late. Are you Voodoo Detective? That's my name, unless they changed it while I wasn't looking. What's this about, Miss...? If you don't mind, I'd like to save the introductions for later, Mr. Detective. I have a rather strange case that may be well suited to a man of your talents. That is, if you do do Voodoo. You do do voodoo, don't you? You don't do voodoo, ma'am. Why don't you come in and sit down and show some respect? Now, suppose you tell me about it from the very beginning. I need your help, detective. I need you to find out who I am. Oh, come on. I, I swear this never happens. <clears throat> what do you mean, find out who I am? If you're looking for a shrink, that's not really the kind of soul searching I do. I mean, I've lost my memory. You may not understand, but it's rather precious to me and I'd like it recovered. You lost your memory, huh? Did you check the couch cushions? Is this some kind of joke to you? Take it easy, lady. 
you haven't given me much to work with. Is there anything you do remember? What are you doing? Just a little examination. Oh, okay. Um, this is going to sound strange. I don't know if you'll believe me. It doesn't matter what I believe. You go on with your story. Well, the very first thing I remember was standing at a crossroads. I'm not sure where, but it felt somehow both familiar and foreign at the same time. Like the memory of a dream. There was an old man there. He spoke to me. I believe this belongs to you. I was confused. I couldn't remember ever having seen the pendant before. In fact, I couldn't remember anything. He seemed to understand. Don't worry, child. A little sleep and you'll be back to your old self again. My head started to swim and I blacked out. When I woke, I was lying in a bed I didn't recognize, in a life I didn't recognize. Around my neck was the pendant from my dream and in my hand, your business card. I never printed any business cards. You mind if I take a look? By all means. Hmm. Well, that's not normal. You said the old man gave you a pendant. Do you have it with you? Yes, here. If it helps the investigation, please keep it. The investigation? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I still need more information before I agree to take the case. So you don't have any idea who you might be? I've learned, or at least I've been told, that my name is Mary Fontoul. My husband, Victor Fontoul, is the president of Island Ventures. We live in a mansion outside of town with our butler, Benny. We've been married for 10 years and we're very happy together. And you don't believe a word of it? I may have lost my memory, Detective, but I haven't lost my intuition. This woman I'm supposed to be, Mary Fontoul, it's not me. And what if you're wrong? Then you'll have made a bit of money, and I'll walk away a confused rich woman. Why not see a doctor? Why come to me? Believe me, I've seen all the best doctors money can buy. The popular opinion is that it's stress. Well, I'm not one to knock the other guy's merchandise, but you could have saved some time coming here first. Let's say I am interested. Do you remember how to use a checkbook? I can offer you a $200 advance and another 200 on completion plus expenses. Money's not an issue. Can you help me out? Or do I need to find someone else? Well, all right, sweetheart. For that kind of cabbage, I'd boo to investigate most anything. Consider me hired. Thank you, detective. I don't mind telling you that comes as a relief to me. Here's the money. I have a good feeling about you. Save your feelings for book club, honey. You know, you better keep that shirt buttoned, detective. I wouldn't want your big old heart falling out. I'll be careful, voodoo doll face. How can I get in touch if I need to talk with you about the case? If you need me, I'm staying at the Chic Shell Hotel. Please come see me if you make any progress. Oh, and detective. Yes? Don't call me Voodoo Doll Face. What a knockout. A dame like that could give a zombie a heart attack or a voodoo detective a real headache. I'd better mail my personal ad and then go get my book of voodoo back from Billy. It's a small, unremarkable pendant made of gold. 
Mary said it was given to her by an old man in a dream. I should see if I can find where it came from. It's the money Mary gave me. I can barely see my desk under all these bills. Nice desk, though. this month's rent from you. You're new in town, so I'm cutting you some slack. But if I have to call you again, I'm not going to be as friendly. Hope to hear from you soon. Thanks. End of message. I don't have anyone to call. It's my number one fan. This radio may be old, but the speaker's got a powerful magnet. When I listen, so do the neighbors. I better grab Grammy's book from Billy's. This town has all the charm of a burning outhouse. Just grab my coat before I go. It's my office. At least until my checks start bouncing. I'm not talking to any tourists. That's a souvenir shop. Tourist junk. That's my brother's bar, Donut Hole Billy's. The last real place on this drag. I'd rather talk to a loaded gun. I hardly recognize this town anymore. These tourists make me appreciate the mosquitoes. They better not tear this place down, too. These tourists are everywhere. I better grab Grammy's book from Billy's. Tourists? Why'd it have to be tourists? Well, if it isn't New Ganine's newest detective, what can I do for you, VD? <sighs> it's been a hell of a day, Ricky. Give me a voodoo fizz and make it kick like a mule with hay fever on Mardi Gras. You got it. On the house. Down the hatch. <sighs> Delicious. What do you think of all these tourists? Well, you know, I really can't complain. They bring good business to the bar. Where did they all come from? Our quiet little island's become a bit of a hot spot ever since Island Ventures moved in. They set out to commoditize the island experience for package and sale. First it was Island Kitchen, then Island Trader, and now Island Coffee. Sometimes I don't even recognize this town anymore. I don't think they'll stop until this island is just one long line of sweaty tourists shuffling from one island franchise to another. 
But I can't complain. Like I said, business is good. What was Zawanga like before they showed up? Well, there were a lot fewer Hawaiian shirts and a heck of a lot more character. The main drag used to be a colorful collection of cozy shops and local flavor. Now it's just a tidy row of island brand imitation. They turned a rum on the rocks into a virgin pina colada. Even started tearing down old monuments. The most recent victim was a Honfo, where island coffee is going up. Now, people practicing voodoo like you and your brother don't really have a place to worship. That's enough about tourists. I need the skinny on some of the locals. Of course, VD. What do you want to know? How is my brother Billy doing? Oh, you know Donut Hole. Still tapping his foot and typing out tunes. I'm sure he's pretty fed up with folks trying to take over his bar, but nothing could shade his shine. He's just his wonderful musical self. But right now he's in one of his trances. Why don't you see if you can bring him around? Thanks for the info, Ricky. I'm working a new case. Mind if I grill you? Go right ahead, Mr. Detective. Have you seen this pendant before? Oh, vintage. Not really my style, but nice piece. Could be an heirloom. Sorry, I've never seen it before. What can you tell me about Mary Fontoul? Fontoul? I only know of Victor Fontoul. He owns Island Ventures. Thanks for the info, Rick. No problemo. Any chance I could borrow your mortar and pestle? The tools of my trade? Would I ask you for your gris gris and magnifying glass? Or oh, whatever it is voodoo detectives use to voodoo detect? Well, I guess we could make a trade. What do you have in mind? I'm running dangerously low on mint leaf. I need it for all the goofy drinks those tourists guzzle down. If you can get me more mint, the mortar and pestle are all yours. I've got a split. See you around, Ricky. That's my grandmother's book of voodoo. We call her Grammy. She was a legendary mambo. I should really ask Billy before I take it. Looks like Billy's got a little offering to Papa Legba here. No use trying to talk to Billy while he's in one of his piano trances. There's got to be a way to snap him out of it. Never know when you might need a bucket of water. Rise and shine. I guess he's still out of it. I bet I could find a use for this. This hurts me more than it hurts you, Billy. Still nothing. That's odd. Looks like a metal gauntlet. The sort of medieval knight might wear. Could come in handy, if you'll excuse the pun. What did the five metal fingers say to the face? Hey, something fell out of the gauntlet. It's an old harmonica, like the one I used to play with Billy when we were kids. You held on to this for me? After all these years. It's a candle. It's my blues harp. If 
I want to get through to him, I need to start speaking his language. Just like old times, hearing that harmonica always brings me back. What's new, Voodoo? What's happening, Billy? Well, shoot, where to begin? What's with the offering on the piano? Something ain't swinging right in the spirit realm. I can't lock down the beat. It's all out of tune. The rhythm's wrong. I figured a little spirits for the spirits couldn't hurt. How have you been? I'm doing all right, brother. Especially since you moved here. Although I wish those island ventures vultures wouldn't knock such a steady beat on my door. They keep trying to get their tasteless talons into my business. Already own more than half the town. Oh, well, in every life, a little rain must fall. As long as I have occasion to tickle the old ivories, I'm satisfied. I wanted to ask you about something else. Lay it on me. I've got a new case. Mind if I pick your brain? Go right ahead. Have you ever seen this pendant? Sorry, I don't go in for any jewelry foolery. Ricky knows more about that sort of thing. You could ask him for a hot tip while you sip. Have you ever heard the name Mary Fontoul? Has my baby brother got eyes for some lovely lady? It has to do with a case. Sure, Voodoo, whatever you say. Wait, Fontoul? Yeah, Mary Fontoul. I know a Victor Fontoul. Maybe she's related to him. She's his wife. Going after a married woman, eh? Oh, I'm just messing with you. Sorry, I never met her. That's enough shop talk for now. You mind if I borrow Grammy's book? Help yourself. But I'm surprised you need it. Must be a real tough case. This old book comes in handy more often than you think. See you around, Billy. Come back again soon. And don't forget that harmonica of yours. It always brings me back. I'm not talking to any tourists. Suntan lotion. My hat and coat keep me covered. It's a camera. A real beauty, too. I can tell you the image quality is truly remarkable. Plus, we developed the photos right here. I'll take it. Great! Thanks for shopping at Island Trader. There's nothing we won't trade for your business. It's the camera I bought from Island Trader. 
The shopkeeper said he'd develop my photos for free. I'm not shelling out any cash for that. This shirt says, Zawanga, sweet Zawanga. Just a bunch of cheap tourist junk. It's a souvenir screwdriver. There's a tiny inscription on the side. I went to Zawanga and all I got was screwed. Funny and functional. I'll take it. Thanks for shopping at Island Trader. For all your trades come true. It's my screwdriver. It says, I went to Zawanga and all I got was screwed. They put the candy where the kids can see. It's a dirty game. Just a bunch of cheap tourist junk. Welcome to Island Trader, an authorized dealer of Island brand products. I'm just gonna look around. Go right ahead, sir. I need to find out who gave Mary that pendant. Might be time to crack open Grammy's book. The plaque says Crumpsford Family Mausoleum. Little Junior, small and rough. He died proving he was tough. Esther, dear, she was a saint. But then she sinned, and now she ain't. Darla ran the old hotel until she rang the checkout bell. There's a bouquet of Centennial Dragonheart plumerias. They're beautiful, but I'm no grave robber. Out of one hole and into another. <laughs> Indeed. Hmm, let's see, six foot, 42 long? but still breathing. What is it that you want? The name's Voodoo Detective. I'm a voodoo private investigator. My name is Eartha. I am the mistress of these hallowed grounds. Good chat. I'll be seeing you, Eartha. Folks always do, sooner or later. Can't use that here. I can't stand tourists. Tourists? Why'd it have to be tourists? Just another mausoleum. Chain restaurant, 
clothes for remodeling. Normally, there's a line around the block. This used to be a humfo, a voodoo place of worship. At least until they bulldozed it to make way for island coffee. <clears throat> I'd rather talk to a loaded gun. Tourists? Why'd it have to be tourists? Fancy bank for fancy people with fancy money. You couldn't plant enough flowers here to kill the smell of greed. That guy's loaded. Excuse me, sir. Would you mind stepping away from the vault? Only crumbs for capital account holders are allowed in. The door is locked. Sorry, sir. Mr. Crumbsford is out at the moment. But don't worry. He should be back soon. Hello, and welcome to Crumbsford Capital. What can I do for you today? I'm a voodoo private investigator. I was hoping to speak with Mr. Crumbsford. Mr. Crumbsford is out at the moment. But don't worry, he should be back soon. I have no reason to give these people my money. See you. It's a bottle of black ink. I'm sorry, sir, but if you take that ink, other customers won't be able to sign our contracts. Well, we can't have that. taste in my mouth. Hey, you keep away from there. It's a ventilation shaft. Looks like it runs to the roof. Legal documents and books on law. I'd rather be stranded on a desert island than read those. Legal documents and books on law. I'd rather be stranded on a desert island than read those. This desk is a little messy, but still, it's a good desk. Mr. Lawton? Uh, if you've come for legal services, I'm afraid I can't take on any more clients at the moment. Actually, my name is Voodoo Detective. I'm a voodoo private investigator. Got some questions I was hoping you could answer pro bono. Absolutely not. I have to finish preparations for an important uh, affair this evening. Can't you see how busy I am? Oh, how perfectly inconsiderate. I ought to hold you in contempt. You're just like my wife, Kiki, and her little puppets. Well, I'm not a puppet. I'm a man! Have you ever seen this pendant before? This is a law office, not a lost and found. Now please excuse yourself before I'm forced to take legal action. Be seeing you. I certainly hope not. Mm. 
man, this guy's loaded. He's got a garden and a zoo. Greenhouse is locked. I'll need to find a key. Sure, it's big, but is it huge? Good day, sir. How can I help you? The name is Voodoo Detective. I'm a voodoo private investigator. Voodoo, you say? What, may I ask, brings you here? Actually, I'm looking for a Mr. Fontoul. Victor Fontoul. That you? Oh, no, sir. I'm Benny, his butler. This is the Fontoul residence, but I'm afraid Mr. Fontoul is in a meeting at the moment. Perhaps you could come back another time. That's all right. I don't mind waiting inside. Mr. Fontule should be finished presently. Looks like someone's afraid of the dark. It's a portrait of a fancy man. Mr. Fontule should be finished presently. I think it's Leopold. Empty. Looks like Benny Boy's been drinking more sherry than the Queen. Opera records and romance novels. There's also handwritten sheet music. It says Benny and the Jest. A ballad about how my love life has been one grand joke. There's a letter here addressed to Benny. Tear stains have blotted out some of the words. Benny, you have to stop. I don't know what he would do if he found... Besides, I can't just forget the way you treated me. I don't know what you're getting at. Hoodoo, you're scaring me. I'd like to remain friends, but you have to stop. Sincerely, I wonder if Mary wrote this. It's a tear-stained letter addressed to Benny. Sounds like a fling gone bad. It says... Benny, you have to stop. I don't know what he would do if he found... Besides, I can't just forget the way you treated me. I don't know what you're getting at. Hoodoo, you're scaring me. I'd like to remain friends, but you have to stop. Sincerely, I wonder if Mary wrote this. Listen, you old pit viper. I've stuck my neck out for you financing this new factory of yours. All right, all right. Calm yourself, dear boy. No need to get excited. Well, if I'm excited, it's your fault. <laughs> Quid pro quo, Victor, you slippery worm. I don't like all this cloak and dagger nonsense. Just a little professional discretion, Gordon. We don't want anyone stealing our recipes, do we? Discretion? I don't care a fig for your discretion. I care about what's being done with my money. Be it is, my friend. I'll explain it all at the shareholders' meeting. For now, please trust that things are progressing on schedule and as planned. <laughs> I don't like being left in the dark, Victor. I don't like it at all. You'd better have some answers next time we meet. <sighs> so
sir, a voodoo detective is here to see you. A detective? Voodoo detective, Mr. Fontoul. I was hoping we could talk. I see. Well, why don't you join me in my office? You've got quite the collection here. I don't even know what most of this stuff is. Ah, yes. Those are from the old days before Island Ventures. I used to travel all over the world, collecting bits and bobs from hither and yon. I find different cultures completely fascinating. It's a bit of a hobby. It's a map of a place called Ventures Island. That's right. Island Ventures has big plans for Ventures Island. Lots of elegant leather-bound books. Just the kind you expect in a fancy office. A reader lives a thousand lives before he dies. The man who never reads lives only one. Looks like a wedding photo. Ah, what a happy day that was. Bloom of the peach, blush of the berry. My sweet, sweet Mary. Right. You've got quite the collection here. I don't even know what most of this stuff is. Ah, yes. Those are from the old days before Iden Ventures. I used to travel all over the world, collecting bits and bobs from hither and yon. I find different cultures completely fascinating. It's a bit of a hobby. Nothing compliments a hot day like a roaring fire. Except perhaps a trench coat. I do apologize for the excitement out there. When in business, one must deal with all sorts of people. Especially when you require funding. What was that argument about? Well, Island Ventures subsidiary, Island Kitchen, is preparing to launch a new line of food. I'm holding the cards pretty close to my chest to avoid any leaks. Gordon doesn't like that. But surely that has nothing to do with why you've come to see me. Unless you, too, wish to inquire about the particulars of our new secret recipes? I'm here on behalf of my client, your wife. Mary? My God! I've been worried sick. Is she all right? She'd been acting like a completely different person, and then she just up and left. I've got some questions about your wife. Uh, please, go ahead. Was Mary spending time with anyone new prior to her memory loss? Not that I know of. My work requires frequent travel, and Mary always insists on joining me. Couple that with her proclivity for solitude, and she isn't left with much opportunity to make new acquaintances. At least, none that I would be unaware of. Does Mary have any close friends? Mary keeps largely to herself, uh, but she does visit with my nephew's wife on occasion. Her name is Kiki Lawton. Do you know how I can reach Mrs. Lawton? I know Kiki and Mary often enjoy brunch together at the Chic Shore restaurant. You might try there. What do you know about Mrs. Lawton? Kiki is the wife of my nephew, Theodore. But I'm afraid I don't know her very well. If you don't mind, I've got other questions. Do you know of anyone who would want to harm Mary? Heavens no. Everyone loves Mary. She's kind and good. She never bothers anyone. A mind would have to be truly unhinged to harm a sweet, delicate flower like Mary. What do you know about Mary's past? I'm afraid very little. I know both of Mary's parents died when she was young, and she has no siblings. But she doesn't like to talk about her past, and 
I don't wish to reopen old wounds. Mary was given this pendant around the time she lost her memory. Look familiar? Why, yes. She brought it to me shortly after her memory trouble began. We never were able to find out where it came from. Do you think it has anything to do with her amnesia? I don't know yet. That's enough about your wife for now. Do you mind if I ask some personal questions? Go right ahead. You've amassed quite the fortune. Got any greedy-eyed next of kin looking for a slice of inheritance pie? No, no, nothing like that. The only family I have aside from Mary is my nephew, Theodore Lawton. He runs a law practice downtown and works as my lawyer. And if you and Mary were out of the picture, he would stand to inherit quite a lot of lettuce, right? Are you suggesting that Theodore is trying to kill my wife? I'm not suggesting anything, just exploring possibilities. Do you know of anyone who might want to do you harm? Someone who might go after your wife to get to you. In business, one has many competitors. And of course, if you're successful, there are bound to be those who look on with covetous eyes. But business is about optimizing profit, detective. And there is no profit in harming a man's wife. That's enough about you for now. Can you let me into the greenhouse? My butler, Benny, manages the grounds here. Uh, you'll have to ask him about it. Though he has become a bit more particular about whom he lets in since his tiff with the local barman. That's all for now. Godspeed, Detective. if it isn't Benny the butler. Hello, detective. What can I do for you? What can you tell me about Mrs. Fontoul? Mary is a good woman. She's always been generous to me. She used to sit for hours with that kind, blank stare of hers, listening to my opera when no one else would. It was unlike her to leave the way she did. I've been so worried. I do hope she's all right. Did you notice anything strange about Mary before she lost her memory? Not that I can recall. She seemed every bit her normal, quiet self. Completely imperturbable, as though a veil of calm separated her from the troubles of the world. Did Mary start spending time with anyone new prior to her memory loss? I don't think so. She only really spent time with Mr. Fontule and her friend, Kiki Lawton. And myself, of course. The dear. Do you know of anyone who would want to harm Mary? No, I don't. Mary never hurt or offended anyone. Frankly, she didn't interact with all that many people to begin with. I've got this gold pendant here. Have you ever seen it? Sorry, no. If you don't mind, I have a few other questions. What can you tell me about Mr. Fontoul? Mr. Fontoul is a beneficent gentleman. I can make no complaints about the time I've spent working under his employ. Even if I could. It's not a butler's place to say such things. Do you live here? Why, yes. My quarters are adjacent to the staircase. Can you let me into the greenhouse? I'm afraid not. The Fontule greenhouse represents a spectacular botanical achievement. The variation in provenance among the flora we cultivate requires careful attention. The only way to maintain precise control over the environment is to limit the number of visitors we allow in. <laughs> That's why I'm the only one with a key. I am sorry. 
I got this letter here addressed to you. Where did you get that? Have you been in my room? This looks awfully bad, Benny boy. A letter from someone who doesn't appreciate your attentions. Enough sherry to float the Royal Navy. And Mary Fontoul wakes up without her memory. Care to explain? You have been in my room, Mr. Detective. I resent what you're insinuating, and I absolutely cannot abide you invading my privacy. I have nothing but respect and admiration for Mary Fontoul. She's my dear friend, and one of the few people to show interest in my opera. I will speak no more on the matter. Thanks, Benny. <laughs>